Hey guys, welcome back to the Unity course in which we made a snake game. Um, it's starting to look like something. We're just missing the actual apple. So um, this week, I actually decided to end the week on creating apple because that's going to be cool. It's going to be entertaining, and we're going to be having a look at prefabs. Now, um, let me just talk about prefab a little bit. So prefabs are object that you create, and then you can keep an instance of. Let me quickly just show you something here. Um, just assume you were playing Super Mario Brothers, or really any game with collectibles. You would go, say, you would go in 3DS Max, you would go in Blender, you would create your nice little um, coin uh, model, and then you would import it in the game. Let's just assume that our coin model would be, in my case, a sphere, right? So that would be my coin, and you can name it something like coin. Now the coin would have some special behavior on it, such as a rotate. So you know the coin would be rotating on itself, every single frame. For that to happen, you would need a script, say like a script that is called rotate, oops, and then you know um, that script would actually have a simple function in it. Let's do the same thing we've done on the first episode, so transform.rotate, oops, rotate, and I'm just doing some example, you don't have to do that, I'm just like showing you some example here, and it would rotate on this axis at um, 90 degrees every second, so time to delta time, here we go. So, you know, you would have your coin and it would rotate. Now you can't really tell it's rotating because that's that's a sphere. Um, so let's make it a little bit smaller in Z. And now you can tell that, you know, your coin would be rotating. So, every time you would want to spawn a coin, technically, you would have to you know, drag and drop your model back in the scene, add the actual rotate script on it, or you would have to duplicate your coin and just you know duplicate with all the component on it. Now this is how you would go about you know creating multiple coin, but that is something that eventually causes problem because imagine that you want to add some kind of particle effect. So let's go here, create a new particle system on your coin, and we just play the game. So right now your coin has a particle system, but you would like you know all your coin to have particle system, but now only one of them has it. Uh, disregard the fact that it looks super awful, but you know you would like to apply this modification to every single coin. Now this is where prefab comes in really handy. So let me just delete everything, keep one coin, and we're gonna turn this coin into a prefab. Just have a look at how exactly we do it. It is super simple. We grab our coin and we drag and drop it inside of our project folder. Now like this, we have a coin inside of our project folder and this is what we call a prefabricated game object. So in this case the coin and it also shows up as blue right here. So um, up here it shows as blue. Now it's, I know this is a little bit hard to see because of the colors with the encoding of the video but it shows as blue. And if we just duplicate this like say here and here and here, we play. We now have five things, you know, that's the same thing as we had earlier. But if we were to add a particle system this time, and we would decide that, you know, this is what we want, this is the final prefab, you can hit apply. And as you can tell, now all the other coin just got their particle system as well. And this is really, really cool because, you know, you can do one modification to one object and it's actually applied to everybody. So let's assume I don't want my particle system anymore, delete it, and then overwrite my prefab and then all of them, they go back to a normal coin. Okay, so enough talking about a coin. What we really, what we're after right here is actually a apple. So have a look at this. What we're gonna be doing is create another cube, a simple cube like that. Let's call it apple. And we're also going to create a new material. So I'm gonna go over to my artwork folder, create material, call it apple material. And I'm going to drag and drop this apple material on the apple. So right now it's actually using the apple material as you can tell and not the default, but this one is actually using the apple material, which means we can modify the color to say a bright red. And this is all I really need. That is going to be my apple prefab. Uh, you can remove the box collider, we don't actually need colliders in our game. Um, we really only need to have the mesh filter and the mesh renderer plus the material just to show a different color. We are going to take our apple, drag and drop it inside of our project folder to create what we call a prefab. Now the cool thing about this is that um, 
since it's actually saved inside of our project folder, we don't need to have an apple laying around anywhere. We don't need to keep this apple inside of the scene because we always have a reference. So say we go in the, on the menu scene, we can simply drag apple. It's going to be there. It's going to be our whole object like we created. So we don't need to keep one in the scene and we can actually use this um, prefab we've made to instantiate it while the game is running. So that is something we're going to be seeing today as well. We're going to be creating an instance of that prefab, a copy of that prefab, and we're also going to be placing it in the scene, just like we did earlier on for, if I just remove that rotate script, um, for a snake, we actually did that earlier on with the create primitive. Now we are going to do the exact same thing, but with the apple. So at the very top here, in my start, because I want to be creating an apple at the very beginning, I will create an apple at a defined location when I first start. Let's actually use um, let's actually use somewhere on the right hand side of our game. So let's do grid at say eight and then four, I think we're on the four, is gonna be equal to minus one. Now if you guys remember, minus one is my definition for apple. Now I have to place an apple exactly at eight and four. So where exactly is eight and four? I would assume that is, um, if I just have a look at his, it would be right here. So that's eight and four as you can tell. Now let's make sure we actually create an apple here when the game start. Here is how we're gonna be creating an instance of that prefab on the fly. We are gonna say instantiate, and then in between, instantiate is actually a function, so in between the parentheses, it takes in an object we want to instantiate. Now, this is where we have to give a reference to that prefab. And it is gonna be a little bit hard to understand at first, but just bear with me. Create something that is public, a public game object, apple prefab. And this apple prefab is what we're gonna be using. So um, let's just make sure we keep writing our thing. We're gonna be spawning apple prefab, just like that. Now we have to put our reference up here because our field is public, but we never say apple prefab is equal to this thing. So we have a public field, we have to assign it manually. Under a snake, you're gonna be finding that there is a new field called apple prefab and this one is public. Let's take our apple, not from the scene this time, not from the actual um, hierarchy or anything. We're gonna be taking it from our project folder and drag and dropping it right here. This actually creates a link in between objects that don't exist in our game just yet and um, you know the, the actual snake script. So if we press on play now, as you can tell, we have an Apple clone. It's called Apple clone because it is a instance of that prefab. It's something else, you know, that's just a copy of the prefab. The prefab still exists. We can create multiple copy. Uh, you could keep bullet and you know, you'd have a gun, you'd be shooting bullet prefab and this is pretty much how we do it. Now we've created an apple, but it wasn't exactly where we want it to be, so we have to modify its position. And just like we did for the primitive we create, we're gonna be keeping track of um, the, this apple we just created. So let's go down here, we're gonna be just taking what we need, say this part, game object geo, is gonna equal to instantiate, because instantiate is actually returning you um, a game object as well, but it's returning you not exactly a game object, it's returning you an object. And you have to cast it afterward, which is also a topic we're gonna to see in the future. But for now, just follow these lines. You are going to be putting um, the Apple free prefab you create, the Apple clone object you create, you're gonna be putting it inside of Geo. Now after that, we're gonna say Geo, the transform the position is equal to eight, four, and zero. That's the position where we want it to be. And finally, the name of that object, we can call it, we can actually call it Apple if you want. Just like this. And now if we hit play, we now have an Apple that is positioned at the right place and it is also called Apple in our game. So that is pretty cool. Now we just have to create some logic around it. Um, I remember we did have something right here. It says it's, minus, it's equal to minus one and we did have some part in our script right here that says um, if it's equal to minus one, let's do a snake score plus plus. So just to make sure this works, I'm going to do a debug.log and say apple with exclamation mark. Now let's go back here and try to actually catch that apple, see if our if statement is being ran. 
and it seems like it is being ran because it's an apple and then exclamation mark. Let's do it again just to make sure. And it seems to only happen once. Now the reason it only happens once is because uh, once we move on this tile, we actually override it by you know the snake length. So we also going to be making sure we delete that apple when time comes. So when we eat an apple, let's do a destroy or let's do let's find our game object first. So game object to destroy, just like we've done for the other one, um, is going to be equal to game object dot find, and we're going to find the object called apple. And then we can do destroy to destroy. This way it's actually going to get rid of the apple and then afterward we're going to need some random equation to actually create a new apple somewhere. So as you can tell we eat it and then it goes back to you know being normal. Now do we actually have the proper length? So let me just check this out. So we have one, two, three, four and also the add that's five and once we eat the apple we should now have six. So let's see. It says one, two, three, four, five, and six, but I feel like there's some kind of delay. If we just have a look here, there is some kind of delay. We only have five at the moment. So there is a little bug here as well. Uh, when we eat the apple, we eventually end up having six, but as you can tell, there is like one frame where we don't delete. Check, just have a look down here, right there. There is one frame where we don't delete. Um, some part of the snake body. So this is definitely something we're gonna have to fix. Now the way I'm actually going to fix this is by using another boolean. I know our code is getting a little bit of spaghetti right now. Um, it should be a lot cleaner, but but this is something we have to go through while we learn. And you know, eventually we're gonna like turn all of these line of code into something really small. So to fix this, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking our for loop. So the two for loops we have here, let's actually bring them down to where we eat. So down here. We have those two for loops and I pretty much just broke my code, let me just fix that. Um, so basically we need two more of these. So be really careful about the syntax, sometimes um, Visual Studio or Mono Develop, they like to reformat your code and that is definitely something annoying. And let's not forget to create a new app over here. But here are my two for loops and we're going to be adding up to every single tile that has, um, that is actually above zero. So if grid at i and j, oops, if I can type, j is actually written like that. Okay, so if i and j is bigger than zero, then let's do grid i and j is plus plus. This way we should buy one more turn for every single part of the snake. And if we try this out now, it actually makes a lot more sense. So we add up one more cube and you know we stay alive um, one tile longer. And now this is going to be true as well when we eat some other apple in the future. And here we go. So guys that is pretty much where I'm going to end today's episode. In the next week what we're going to be doing is a lot of um, just putting some meat around that. We're going to start by creating a new apple every time we eat one. We might modify the size of the grid and actually have something that is a little bit more wide or you know more room to play around with and we're also going to start putting some meat around the game so maybe like some kind of menu, some kind of feedback, um, UI, all that kind of stuff. We're going to start doing that next week. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, I hope you actually learned something and if you did please leave me a like, leave a, an actual like on the video or a like on the Facebook page, that would be quite cool. Check out the Patreon page and also support me at other places so I can keep on making courses and uh, keep on having fun doing this. So guys, thanks so much for watching once more and I will be seeing you in the next one. Cheers.